So cycling's great fun, it's great exercise, it's great for getting around town, for visiting your friends, for getting out into the countryside, discovering nature. But what if you're visually impaired and you can't get on a bike yourself and just pedal off down the road? Well, that is what Two's company is all about. It's about giving opportunities to people who are blind or visually impaired to come out on the tandem with the help of a sighted front rider who can steer the tandem for them. The first I ever found out about Lifecycle, I had an uh, email that came through from the RNIB. They send out a monthly newsletter. There was this article in there and it said, would you like to get involved in, in tandem bike rides? And initially I thought, oh my good grief, how does that work? Um, but then I looked at it and thought, well, it's, it's offering some of the things that I really wanted. We started our Two's Company project in uh, 2006, um, following we, a phone call we had from a woman who was visually impaired and she uh, had loved cycling but had got to the point where she couldn't ride anymore because her eyesight had deteriorated so much. And she said, oh, could you take me out on a tandem? And we sort of thought, well, we could, yeah, we don't have one, but yeah, we'll look into it. And um, so the, from that conversation, the whole project was born. Three, two, one, go. They have Marfan syndrome, which is a genetic disorder affecting um, the tissue connectivity. And I'm a full-time carer for my daughter, Annie. I have a congenital, um, I complain, it's hereditary, uh, it's degenerative, it's called retinitis pigmentosa, um, and most people would just call it RP. Um, because my daughter has, is visually impaired as well, she goes to a, an activities group for visually impaired children, and they contacted us with a view to doing a tandem ride. And I thought it was such a good idea, and it was mainly for Annie that I was thinking about it. Um, I, I put her down for the next ride and I went along with her because she didn't have any confidence at the time. And um, it was there that I found out that uh, they did rides for adults as well and I would qualify because I'm visually impaired. I like go tandem riding because it's, it's really good fun and um, you have like a front rider and a back rider and then, yeah, to help people with um, special needs to do tandem riding. I had this uh, email and, and I thought, oh, I, I quite fancy going along to this. There wasn't anything really stopping me doing that. I went down to Queen's Square. They were holding this taster day down there and they had some bikes and they said, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll just get you on one of the bikes and we'll give you a little, little trip around Queen's Square. And although you could have been scared about just a loss of control, you're sat there on the bike and somebody else, you're having to give complete trust to these people in front of you. Otherwise, you just can't get on and you just do it. So we got on and from the moment we pushed off and he started riding, it was brilliant. If you can't see, it's, it's actually, you can't take part in team games. You, it's even really hard to just go swimming, for example. You can't just go jogging on your own. So actually your opportunities to exercise are very limited and your opportunities to meet other people and particularly sighted people are very limited. So originally I knew that I had the disease when I was 12 and then gradually over time you lose more and more of your sight. Uh, in my case I lost my sight straight in front of me um, but I have some small elements of peripheral vision that I've still got. I first found out about Marfan syndrome when um, my mum really noticed that there were some things wrong. The thing that sort of broke the camel's back was when I came in one day and I said hello dad to the chair in the corner and it was a stuffed guy for Guy Fawkes Day. So um, she took me down to the um, eye hospital and it was there that they suggested that I might have Marfan syndrome. Even though I knew at the age of 12 that I would lose my sight, it's such an abstract thing when you're, you're 12, it, it means nothing. You, you, you don't understand what will happen to you. There's, there wasn't a special day when it all happened. It, it just gradually happened over a long period of time, over years. 
So we uh, get donations from the public. Some of our participants have done sponsored runs and sponsored bike rides and you know, we had a sponsored abseil a couple of years ago, uh, 20 of us um, abseiled. One of the abseilers was, um, was Jenny Hodges. I really take my hat off to her because it was terrifying and, and she just did a brilliant job. I had a car crash 18 years ago. I was running a restaurant at the time. I was a restaurant manageress. And suddenly I realised I, well, I had lots of injuries. Um, had to recover from that long quite a long, slow recovery, really. I think she was one of the first people to, to take part, and she's been coming ever since. And I think, you know, she loves the exercise. She loves getting out and meeting people. And she's commented in the past that one of the biggest benefits for her is being accepted by sighted people, because um, very often in other situations, she's not. You notice how different people treat you. They don't speak to you. So yeah, it's quite a different environment to suddenly be in, which of course I wasn't used to. What we do is we'll organise a ride with a date. We have a ride leader. Um, and then we say, we send email out to everyone and kind of pair up our visually impaired back riders with the volunteers. So it's all quite carefully worked out. You, you can get transport to the start of the ride, we all group up, paired up by life cycle, and the person you're riding with will then go through the bike with you, get the saddle the right height, get anything you need, hopefully into panniers. Um, you can then do a little test run around the car park or something, make sure you're in tune with each other. There are days, you know, when I find it hard, hard to move, and, um, you know, I can be feeling quite poorly but it really is just mind over matter. Before it was pretty much stuck at home, certainly not doing very much exercise. And then the opportunity to do um, Two's Company came up. So I jumped at it because I thought it's some exercise that I could do um, that you know wouldn't really affect my feet and legs as badly. It can get quite debilitating, both mentally and physically you end up doing less and less um, and it, it's definitely a, a trap that quite a lot of blind people fall into. You suddenly realise I, I can't do the things that I used to be able to do. I can't do the job in the way that I used to be able to do it. I can't walk about independently and just, just go outside and, and do what anybody else does. It, it really has just been such an experience since I've got involved with them. Um, and like I said, it's opened up so many things to me that I'd previously not wanted to get involved in. And, and it's made me realise you've got to get out there, you've got to do these things. I'd been to my friend one night and I left her house driving home along the Bristol Road and a drunk driver was coming the other way, lost control and drove into me, which caused me quite a lot of damage. Um, I was taken to the BRI. They did think it was going to be a fatality, but I'm here. Four days afterwards, they rebuilt me because all my face was a bit of a mess. And they had to remove my left eye because the optic nerve had been severed. And my throat was quite affected because I had a tracheotomy and things. That's hence why I've got a silly, silly little voice now. But at least I can still talk and breathe. So I was in hospital for six weeks, then came home just thinking I'd be home a few weeks and my eyesight would come back. I didn't really, I suppose I didn't think about it. And when it didn't, it suddenly dawns on you, how am I going to live? What am I going to do? I luckily always had the attitude, well, I survived, I must have survived for some sort of reason. I've just got to get on with it and find that reason. The um, benefits can be really dramatic and make a huge difference to people. It's fantastic that just from such a simple idea we can give these amazing benefits to so many people. I'd say the main way that Life Cycles 2's company has helped Annie is in her independence and self-confidence. Um, now she's quite happy to go along on her own. Yeah. Um, 
hold our own conversationally and socially and um, have a really good time and yeah I do enjoy be, it be part of the team and enjoy everything I do yeah because I, I do I do enjoy it really well I, I I'm loving it she loves it um she really enjoys going um but just I think the way Annie is with her um learning disabilities she does live very much in the moment but then once she's there she's chatting away to everyone um really wants to go as fast as she possibly can on the tandem and the front riders have a bit of a job because she's always urging them on to to win the race even though it isn't a race you go through a rejection phase when you don't want to accept it and then at some point you have to come out the other side and accept what the situation was. And for me that probably happened about probably no more than a couple of years ago. I had some rehabilitation and I was advised how to get around a house and find things and also learned a bit of cane training. It, it's a big confidence issue, it's a huge step to suddenly walk out and about when you don't see it's a bit scary to say the least. I was a little nervous at the start when I when we started I met everyone and the leader and everything it was just a little nerve-wracking for me but I did enjoy it after that after I've been. So I went along with you didn't I? Dad went along with me with that yeah yes. but now I'm getting braver doing it now I can go on my own. It's just a lovely friendly community to, to be in everyone's doing what they want to do and of course you're hopefully keeping fit whilst you're doing it. The Twos Company project has just been massive for me. I mean, it, it, it's opened up so many doors. It's been so positive. I, I feel we get all the support we need. <clears throat> and when we do stop for lunch, your front rider will guide you into wherever we're going, if it's a cafe or a pub. First ride of the year, it's a bit nippy, but it's good to get back on the bikes again. And it's good to meet some of the new front riders, like John here. Um, this is his first trip on the bikes as well. I don't know who's the more nervous out of the two of us. Probably John. Yeah. It's been great. We've enjoyed it. It's been quite an easy ride today. Didn't know what to expect, and uh, we really enjoyed the ride out here. So now we're on a bit of stretch that runs out to Bitten Railway Station. Yeah. Uh, just going to pass a run on our left. Um, seen life cycle advertised. I thought I'd have a look at it. You're doing the volunteering and there's a feel-good factor involved with that. It's, it's amazing. And, and it's not just the getting out bit. It's not just the exercise or the open air. It's, it's being with people, it's interacting with people that have similar issues and concerns to you and being within a supportive group. It made me feel happy because I like going there and enjoying it all. And yeah, when I, I feel really, really excited and I really I will enjoy it when I, when I get there. It's amazing what, what you get out of it, really. I mean, apart from the fact I felt I wouldn't be able to do it on the fitness level. It's just great to be outdoors, doing something that's hopefully quite healthy. It boosts confidence, it boosts your self-esteem. It's, it's just a very good environment to be in. I want to get more involved in as much as I can to get as much out of life as possible. Well, I really hope Lifecycle will carry on doing the good work that they're doing. Just hope it keeps continuing for many, many years. Future is, um, you know, it is more of the same. It is making sure that we can sustain this project for the people um, who already take part. It's also trying to help more people take part who are visually impaired and make sure that everybody out there who who is visually impaired knows that there is this project in Bristol and they can come along if they want to. Um, I would like to be able to expand our, uh, the number of rides for young people. Ultimately, you know, the big, the big vision is that anyone anywhere in the country who's visually impaired could go on a tandem ride. If you